Hello, I'm Super Orange Cat here, and today with your Tanami News update of December 22nd, 2020. Let's start with the biggest news. Earlier this afternoon, news broke that the new season of Attack on Titan will be debuting on Tanami on January 9th, and it will be on the 1230 slot. This is interesting because as you've been following anime, you know that over the last couple weeks, the new season of Attack on Titan's dub started, sub, I mean, started airing in Japan to pretty positive reaction. And being a mainstay of Tanami, it was seen as a guarantee that it would eventually be on the block. And what was maybe surprising was how soon we got it. Now first, and they also come with a new schedule for the ninth. So I'm going to read the official Tanami announcement on their Facebook page first. Witness the final season of an epic series. Tanami is proud to announce the fourth season of Attack on Titan, premiering on January 9th at 20, at 12.30 a.m. Plus, the block is expanding by another half hour, so check the full lineup below and prepare yourself for Tanami every Saturday night from midnight to 4 a.m. And the lineup for the ninth will be at midnight, Dragon Ball Super, 12.30, Attack on Titan, 1 a.m., Alicization War of the Underworld, 1.30, the Fire Force, 2 o'clock, Ass Class, 2.30, Jumaseto, Death Beats, presumably Death Beats, I don't say if you're Death Beats or Machu Picchu, 3 a.m. you have Naruto Shippuden, and 3.30 you have Demon Slayer. Now, this is pretty interesting. This is a very small change, only change being that Attack on Titans added 12.30, and then everything after that shifted back one. And that's a lot to unpack here, you know, because, like I said, you have Dragon Ball Super. I think they're, they're committed. At this point, if they're going to keep it in for this update, a Dragon Ball Super will be the mainstay at the start of the block, regardless of if it's a rerun or not. Because Attack on Titan does have the profile where, in theory, it can lead off a block. It definitely has the fan base. But I guess Tanami made the decision that they thought that more people would tune in for a rerun of Dragon Ball than a dub premiere, by the way. This, and this is another note I'm going to bring up in a second after I mention the schedule here. And you have Alicization. It's kind of been disappointing in the ratings so far. That got pushed back to one. Fire Force. Note, this is a dub. This is a... TV dub premiere, 1.30, season 2. 2 a.m., you have Assassination Classroom, which was probably the biggest smash hit of 2020 on the block. It's at 2 o'clock now. Jim is set of Death Beats because I guess they're either going to rerun the show again or they're going to use a couple weekends early in this new year to air the four episodes that didn't air on Tanami, I suppose. That's interesting. I really... I really feel like, may, at best case scenario, this is a Trojan horse to have the block be larger, so that in a couple weeks, when Jim Asoto Death Beats, air quotes, finishes, then we'll get something new. Like, SSSS Gridman, most likely, because we already have the announcement, that'll be coming sometime in January. And then you have Shippin' and Demon Slayer reruns thrown at the end of the block, unsurprising there. But here's the interesting thing about Attack on Titan, and perhaps the reason why it's being announced to air this early, because if you know how the world is, especially with regards to dubbing being a very uh, slowed down process now, a lot of people are surprised. A lot of people are like, yeah, Attack on Titan sub is airing, but it's going to be a little while until enough dubbed episodes are ready for Tanami to pick it up and to confidently pick it up without risking having to stop it at some point or do what they did back with uh, My Hero Academia where they have to rerun episodes mid-run which was an awkward thing that happened back in uh, last year. But yeah. And the reason why is the fact that back in 2014, so six years ago, Konami, in what in retrospect might be the best business deal they have ever made, had the deal to get the full dub premiere rights to air first. Which means, because Funimation at the time were not putting much emphasis on streaming, so basically what you get is that Tanami, Funimation now cannot air the dub until Tanami airs the dub. Which is, considering how the world is now with streaming and the exclusivity and having first rights to air something, this is a massive win for Tanami. So Funimation is probably pushing Tanami to pick it up. And they're gonna make they're probably gonna make make these dubs at full speed because they want to be able to put them on their app and they can't put them on their app until Tanami actually airs them. And also the fact that much like my hero academia, how that got moved to the front of the line when dubbing had to be done at home, this is a big name blockbuster title. Like it is like of all the titles Funimation has, like My Hero Academia and Attack on Titan are more or arguably probably the two absolute largest. So of course they're gonna put natural emphasis on those because those are their money makers 
you know, so they're going to be, there's going to be a strong push to dub the show. And I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have to really worry about not having dubs ready because Funimation has a vested economic interest in actually pushing these out now, which is something they really didn't have last year for a lot of their smaller name anime. You know, and that's at least a good thing for Tanami, and Tanami appears to be taking advantage of it. We're going to get it sooner than a lot of people thought. I was thinking late January, early February for getting this. Looks like we're getting it the second weekend of January. However, January 2nd, we don't know what the schedule for that is. I've had some people say, well, the ske long-term schedules are up and it's a normal Tanami week. Well, like with what happened this past Saturday where we got movies, which only a week or two before we thought was going to be a normal week, these things can change very fast. So I would not take that as a given. We could have a marathon. We could have a relatively normal schedule. However, they would have, probably have to at least post what that schedule is because, I mean, at the same time, it's going to be interesting to see it's going to be interesting to see how things come up this month. And another little note I want to make, kind of tying to the point I made about dub exclusivity early on. Note, like I said, in my a theme in my uh, top best and worst things for Tanami in 2020 videos, uh, one of the themes was being able to have the rights to air the dub, especially getting it first. You know, with the era of streaming and how a lot of streaming services want to throw their things on there as fast as possible, be the first ones to get it on there. What we find very interesting here is how I mentioned the fact that in the starting in the year 2020, we only got two true dub premieres on Tanami, that being the two different seasons of War of the Underworld. Uh, someone in my comment section last video pointed out, well, Golden Wind. Yes, that is a true dub premiere. However, I didn't include that because the dub started airing in 2019. So I was thinking it only shows that started its Tanami run in 2020. So to address that there. And again. Interesting, pretty big news. I'm a little disappointed Jim Aceto's still here. But like I said, best case scenario, that's just a Trojan horse for SSSS Goodman. Or uh, Gridman, not Goodman. Uh, imagine an anime of John Goodman, that'd be fun, you know? And that'd be interesting to see where that schedule is. I'm really interested to see where they would shuffle that show in. Knowing Tommy, they'll just take the lazy route and just throw it at 2.30 in the morning where Jim Aceto is now. That'll anger a lot of people because I've seen a lot of positive reaction to SSS's Gridman being picked up by the clock. But again, it's going to be interesting to see. And that's not the only news we have today. A couple more things I want to push out quickly. Usually, since it's, Tanami, Tuesday, since it's Tuesday, I usually do Tanami rating videos. And yeah, and here's the interesting thing. Like I mentioned it earlier, there were two movies that aired on uh, uh, last uh, Saturday night. And that being the Wonder Woman movie and a Justice League movie. What I found interesting is that ratings are available for the Wonder Woman movie, but I can't find anywhere the written numbers for the Justice League movie. So I can all I can report is that the Wonder Woman movie got a 0.23. On that surface, that sounds amazing. That's much higher than I thought it was going to get. But at the same time, it could be arguably that it's people who tend in expecting Dragon Ball Super, and then as the night went on, they just tuned out. And the reason why I mention that is, that also probably happened Thanksgiving weekend. And yeah, we finally have ratings for that weekend. If you recall, Thanksgiving weekend, we had a marathon of Guinea Tartofsky's show Primal, which is an Adult Swim show that a lot of people say it's very anime-inspired, it's very anime-inspired. Guinea himself went out and said that he did not want the show to be on Tanami, which makes it funny that considering that we got a marathon on Tanami of that show for season one. And the ratings for that show on Thanksgiving weekend went as follows. 0 0.21, 0 0.17, 0 0.17, 0 0.16, 0 0.12, 0 0.11, 0 0.09, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.08. And this is a weird rating set of ratings. For marathons, usually we start low, but we have very, very great retention. As in usually you start like a 0.13, and at the end of the night you have like a 0.11. Which is it starts low. Because a lot of people don't have interest in watching something they've already watched. And, but the people who have decided to watch are just going to watch the whole thing because they want to watch it again. They've committed to watching it again, you know. But we have something different here. Like, you have a .21. If you told me that a marathon in the year 2020 would have a .21, I always thought Tommy had found the second coming of Christ or something. This is an amazing way to start, start a marathon ratings-wise. But then there is no retention. It just keeps dropping throughout the night. 
And with these numbers below point one at the end, I think these are numbers that were lower than the Promised Neverland's marathon ended at. And I find that interesting. And some people have had their theories about it. a lot of people saying a lot of people probably were interested, but like were just more or less bored by the show. And I don't blame them because the show is a very, uh, it's an artsy show. Like, they go out of their way to avoid... I don't think there's any talking at any point during the show. There might be one or two times where, like, the main character, I already forgot his name, says, like, a word or two, and that's it. And that type of show, although there's a very devout fan base for that type of show, it's more of a cult fan base. And I think that's part of the reason why the overall marathon had horrendous retention, despite starting really well. But again, and there's not much to say because he really can't say much about marathons because it's not going to carry momentum week to week because that show is probably not airing the next week. I sh obviously, it didn't. And again, but the big news of the day, that being Back on Titans Season 4, debuting on Tanami January 9th at 1230 in the morning. So what do you guys think? What's your opinion about the news update today, about Attack on Titan, about how the ratings have gone recently? Leave your comments, leave your opinions down below. I love reading them. If you like this content, if you want more Tanami news, quick update content like this, please like, please comment, and subscribe. I am the Super Orange Cat, and that is all.